and amen. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. That the communication of your faith, everybody say faith, may become effectual or active. How many would like your faith to become active? Come on. That your faith uh, may become active by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. Hallelujah. We've got we've to begin to activate our faith. And, and it comes by literally acknowledging every good thing which is in you by or in Christ Jesus. And we have so many wonderful things. Acknowledging fully every good thing. Everybody say good thing. I, I am GMO. I am, I am GMO. Spiritually GMO. I am genetically modified. I am. Glory to God. I am genetically modified in my spirit. Come on, somebody. When I was born again, God created a new creation in me. I went from, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 what is that? Uh, butterfly comes from a, a caterpillar. caterpillar. Yeah, a caterpillar. And, uh, I, I mean, you have been changed. You have been spiritually, genetically modified. Now, when God does it, it's great. When man does it, no, no, no. You are blessed. Come on, somebody. I, I am, I, I don't I like to brag, but I'm a $6 million man. And uh, there, there are good things inside of me. There are things that were not inside of me before I was born again. There are great things inside of you, the, uh, amen, that you did not have before you were born again. I did not have those things before I was born again. God began to put certain things inside of me, equipping me, not to be natural, but to be supernatural. Now, we've got to begin to acknowledge those things if we want our faith to work. We've got to begin to acknowledge the things that God has put in us when He recreated or regenerated our spirit man. When we go forth now, we are not going forth in the natural. We're not going forth in the flesh. We're no longer of the carnal nature. The word carnal literally comes from the word meat. So literally, if you're carnally minded, you're a meathead. No, we're no longer a meathead. We are now children of the King. Come on, somebody. We're rising up. We know who we are in Christ, and we're beginning to know what belongs to us, what those good things that are in us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to activate my faith this morning. I mean, I want to, I want to go to great faith. I want, to, I want to do some things, but it's only going to happen if I begin to acknowledge the things God has put in me so that I can walk not in the old nature, but begin to walk in the new nature. Come on. Hallelujah. God's about to do some things. Glory to God. Woo, we've been changed. We've been changed into His image. We've been changed to be like Him. Hallelujah. We need the knowledge, or we need to, well, the knowledge, but we also need to acknowledge what He's put in us. We need to get in the Word. We need to get in the Word so much that we know what He's put in us so that we are able to overcome in this world. I, I don't want to live in this world the way I lived in this world before I was born again. My goodness, no. But I want, I want to live according to the Word of the living God and what He has put in me and what He's put in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to get into this this month. We're going to... Woo! We're going to activate our faith by getting a hold of the things that God has put in us. You know, literally activating your faith is where faith gets results. I want to get results. I want to get some things that are promised in His covenant. Amen? Glory to God. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, one of my favorite chapters in the Word of God. Romans chapter 8. 
Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to preach myself happy. <laughs> you know, when you, when you see these things, God has put so many things inside you, and He has been doing things. We're just going to touch on it this morning. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For whom Jesus did foreknow, He also did predestinate. Now, predestinate literally means He knew you before the foundation of the world. He knew you. Uh, he's thought about you. You were in the DNA of Adam. Come on. You were already. Uh, every tree came from the first tree. Every person came from the first person. Everything was already in God. Hallelujah. Amen. When we understand everything's in God, we're going we're gonna to walk in this thing. I, I mean, oh, we're going to begin to realize He's been thinking about you for a long time. It says His thoughts towards you are as the sand of the sea. He's had billions of thoughts all the time thinking about your life, thinking about all these things. You have been predestined or destined to win. You've been predestined to be conformed into the image. You've been predestined to be conformed into the image of the flesh. No, no. Into the image of a man. No, in... You've been predestined to be conformed to His image. The image of His Son. Glory to God. I want to be like Jesus. I want to walk like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. That He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, it says, Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom He called, them He also justified. And whom He justified, them He also glorified. Glorified. I mean, how many know you're already justified, you're already glorified? All these things are already in you. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. You have thought out purpose. You have thought out purpose where God has deposited in you the things of your purpose and the things of your destiny. God has already placed those things in you. Come on. He's already done it. I mean, He's already done it. Don't be trying to do somebody else's destiny because you're not... Uh, God didn't put those things inside you. Begin to find out what God has made you for and allow those things to blossom in your life. Let those things rise up to the top. Glory to God. God's trying to put some things, uh, reveal some things that He did long time ago. I mean, He did some things in the womb of your mother where you were wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God's trying to bring a revelation to us so that we can be strong in faith. A revelation, and it happens when we acknowledge what He's been doing. That He's conformed us into His, His image. That's where Adam was before the fall. He was made in the likeness and image of God. We are now back into that spiritual image. Hallelujah. Amen. We're no longer separated. Glory to God. So here we find that uh, it says, uh, <laughs> verse 32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Hallelujah. He's already given us given gifts, blessings, glory to God. God created you to win. You have the favor of God. The favor of God is on your life. You should expect the favor of God. You should realize that He has done certain gifts. He's done certain things. He's, he's blessed you. He's a gift giver. He deposits, he deposits daily gifts in you. Oh, come on. He does things so that you're fully equipped. 
Say, I'm fully equipped. Turn with me over here to Ephesians chapter 2. Glory to God. We get in the Word here. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 2. And go down here to verse 7. That in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace. Let's just stop right there for a moment. You know the word grace is charis. It means gifts, but it also means it's the word for favor. That He would show us His favor. You have grace. Why? Because it's the gift. It's what's been given. God has already imparted it to you. You walk in this charis. You walk in this favor. Everywhere you go, you have favor. Come on, somebody. Amen. <sighs> that in the ages to come, every day of your life, and into eternity, He might show you the exceeding riches of His favor. Now, this word grace means favor. It means gifts. It means grace. It, it means empowerments. How many know He has given you empowerments to be powered up supernaturally for Him, for His glory? He's trying to... <laughs> Do you know I always, I always say when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, when you got born again, you're, you're a light, you're like a lamp for the Lord. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's like you plug the lamp in. How many know you got to get in the power source? you you got to get into where you, you, the, there's empowerment. God's trying to put empowerments in you. Certain things that make you work. Things that you cannot do on your own. Well, I, I could never do that. Yeah, you could, but now you can I, 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 I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't know how to pray. I, blah, blah. You know, you hear that all the time with, with church folks. They, I, I couldn't do this. I can't do this. I, 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 I'm not, you know. Mm. We need to acknowledge every good thing God has put in us to activate that faith. Amen. 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 Glory to God. <laughs> the riches of His favor. Glory to God. You know, verse 8, literally, you already have the gift of favor. It's a gift. I said it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Charis means gift. Everybody say gift. You don't, know, you don't earn it. It's not by your works. You got grace. Say, I have grace. You have favor. Say, I have favor. I have favor. You're not trying to get favor with someone. You already do. Well, I, 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 they don't seem to be going my way. Now, of course, there's sometimes people's will will get involved in it. But how many know you can, you can break down that will in the Spirit? Glory to God. But you have favor. You walk in favor. You walk with empowerments. You walk with this grace. The very first area the Lord told me to teach on in this, this series is the fact that you have been given gifts, Amen. which is the favor of God, which is the empowerments of God, which God has been giving these things to you. Amen. Say, I have favor. I have favor. How do you acknowledge what you have? You say it. You confess it. You say it. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> now notice what it says, verse 8. Um, it says, For by grace, for by favor, are you sozo, saved, healed, delivered, prosperous. That word sozo means all those things. So, by favor, the favor of God, which I have, which is in me, that I acknowledge. By this grace, I am healed. I am saved. I am 
prosperous. I am, all, all, that word sozo implies all those things, hallelujah. The word, word savior, uh, uh, so, uh, so tear, uh, literally is savior, deliverer, uh, 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 healer, all those things in the same word. You receive everything the same way. You, you got saved by your confession of faith. You get healed by your confession of faith. You get delivered by your confession of faith. You believe with your words. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you acknowledge what you have, when you acknowledge what's in the Word of God, you've been planting seeds of the Word inside your heart. When you plant those things in your heart and you acknowledge that they're yours, then you'll speak it. Amen. You ever notice somebody who doesn't really have some things, they won't, they, they don't, they won't talk about it. They'll be negative. They'll, they'll, I don't have the, you know, blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you, you got it? You say, yeah, I, I, we got that. You know, yeah, Seriously. praise God. We're, yeah. Amen. Why? Because it comes out your mouth. You, 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 your, <laughs> your confession of faith. I want to speak the word of the living God. When I speak the word of the living God, by His stripes I was healed. Well, what am I doing? I'm speaking God's word. I want to speak God's word. When you speak God's word, hallelujah, for by grace, by this gift, by this favor, are you saved, are you healed, are you delivered, are you prosperous? All those things of the blessing of God, hallelujah. Through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. What's faith? Trusting God. Believing God. So I believe what I say. What am I saying? The Word of God. I believe the Word of God. I believe the Word is in me. I believe the seeds of the Word are in me. I believe that I have favor. I have grace. I have the gifts of God. Sozo, life in me. Amen. Amen. I'm walking in it. I'm talking in it. I, I, I believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. You ever notice when you, when, you, when you got something, you talk about it? Glory to God. If you don't have it, you don't talk about it. You got to begin to talk about Jesus. You got to begin to talk about the Word. You've got to begin to talk about this covenant filled with precious promises. And every promise is yes and amen. And every promise you get to get a hold of. Amen. 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 A covenant is not just to get you to heaven. Matter of fact, this whole book is not about getting you to heaven. Most religious people uh, spend all their time trying to get people uh, saved uh, and resaved each Sunday so they get to heaven. How many know you're already seated in heavenly places? Amen. If you're born again, you're already seated in heavenly places. Amen. Your name's already written down in the Lamb's book of life. Now, I'm not trying to get saved again next week because I'm horrible this week. And then I'm horrible the next week, so I'm get saved another time. I mean, you get, and, and you keep hearing more and more messages on, and really they, they think the word salvation means to get, to get to heaven. No. This whole thing is about being born again. Amen. This whole thing is about becoming a child of God. Hallelujah. This whole thing is about following Him today, not some glad morning. This whole thing is about I've been changed. I'm part of the royal family. I'm no longer who I was. I, I'm a new creation in Christ. I've been empowered of God. I'm a child of the king. I'm, I'm no longer uh, uh, who I was. Uh, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Everybody say all things. If you have some things still around, lingering, Tell yourself, all things have been changed. Amen. We're no longer living in this world uh, to be of this world. We're not of this world. We're of a different kingdom. Now we're still on earth, but we're not of this system. We're of the principles of the word of the living God. And when we get this word inside of us, and we find out <laughs> these wonderful promises and begin to acknowledge they're in us now. 
will begin to walk in it. Come on, somebody. Amen. For by grace, for by a gift. It's not earned or deserved. Those things are already in you. Grace is in you. Grace is in you. Favor is in you. Empowerments are in you. Good things are in you. Hallelujah. They're already been empowered into you. They're already in you. You're blasting you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the, the enemy wants you to focus or acknowledge the junk. Acknowledge the past. But God wants you to acknowledge the grace. He wants you to acknowledge the favor. He wants you to acknowledge the things that He's put in you. Glory to God. When I go to a meeting, uh, minister's meeting, for example, uh, well, this meeting had this past week. Uh, I, I, I fully expect favor. I expect favor. Why? It's in me. I have favor. Amen. I, I, I sit in the front row. Why? I have favor. You know, there are people that will go into a meeting somewhere and they'll say, you know, I, I never get good seats. You think maybe why they're sitting in the back row is because they never get good seats. <laughs> and then they'll say something like this. Well, I like the back because, uh, well, well, and then they can make some weird excuse. I want to be by the spout where the glory comes out. I, I want to be right dab in the middle of whatever God's doing. Hallelujah. It's not so, you know, some people think, well, you just want the choice seats. You know, the Word of God says don't have the choice seats. I didn't put myself there. Favor put me there. Hello. Now, if you go up there and you say, I have to have this. <laughs> They're going to say, nope, you don't. <laughs> Amen. No, God, favor will put you at the front, in front of the line of the supermarket. At the bank, at this and that. My good favor will, you have favor. You're not trying to get it. You got it. You got favor to have a job. Amen. Well, you know, there's just not any jobs out there. Tell, tell that to everyone who has one. Isn't that right? People, people I remember when, when I was back in Bible school, and we both went to the same Bible school. I, I arrived and... and uh, we were off campus the first semester, and they, uh, uh, they said, I met the guy next door to me, his apartment next door, and he said, there aren't any jobs. He said, I've been looking for six months. He said, there's not any jobs out there. I mean, you can probably get a job for you know, minimum wage or something, but you, there's no jobs. He said, there just aren't any. And I said, okay. Not listening to that guy anymore. <laughs> and the next day I went out and got a job. Hallelujah. And a good one. Hallelujah. Why? I have favor. You have favor on your life. You have favor in you. You walk in favor. You walk in the blessing. Amen. You start out at minimum wage, you're going to own the place. Hallelujah. Don't, don't be sitting there saying, well, you know, I just don't think I, you know, blah, blah, blah. Get out of the past and get into the fact that favor is already in you. Amen. Gifts are in you. Amen. Empowerments are in you. Amen. God's grace is all over you. Amen. And it's by faith. It's by faith. Well, uh, <clears throat> Pastor Jeff, are you saying that... Uh, we don't have to do anything to get to heaven. When did I say anything about heaven? <laughs> everything's by faith. I said everything's by faith. Everything's by faith. Everything's by faith. Matter of fact, the principles of the kingdom in a balance are worked our works are faith. Faith without works is dead. We work 
the kingdom. We work the principles of the kingdom. I've heard uh, some people on the area of grace, you, you get, and we were talking about this the other day, you, you, you got a good balance in the middle of, of what the Word says. And then you got people way over here that say, uh, I'm in grace now, I don't have to pray, I don't have to tithe, I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that. I, no, you get to. The laws of God, not the law, the Torah, the laws of this covenant still work, but you've got to work them. The, the law of faith, you've got to work. You've got to work the law of life and death. You've got to work these laws of the principles of God. Amen? Amen. But it's not works in toil. It's works of faith. Now you've got the other group over here that everything's a work. And I'm working my way to heaven. And I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I hope I'm good enough to get to heaven. My goodness, it's not by your works lest any man should boast, the Word of God says. Amen? So there is a balance in the middle where you're not way over here where you don't have to do anything of God and you can just live like the devil. Romans 6, read that and you'll find out in Romans 7 and 8. Or, or get over here where, where you, you just uh, constantly thinking about how bad you are. No, in the middle you'll find that you'll be acknowledging every good thing that God has done, and He did it by His blood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And God will give you favor. I said God will give you favor. I, I've had favor with leaders. Uh, the leader, uh, prime minister of uh, uh, the Marshall Islands, uh, helped guide the Marshall Islands for a while, uh, prophetically speaking words over that country. Glory to God. They literally gave me an honorary uh, ambassadorship to the Marshall Islands, uh, which that plus five cents gives me a cup of coffee. But, the, <laughs> but it, I mean, I, I, I've been, you know, with leaders, uh, guiding things, doing things over the, and, and, and when I'd be approached, could you, could you, uh, 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 prophet backer, could you, uh, come on, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, no, could you uh, speak, someone want, wants you to call them, or so-and-so wants you to, and over the years, I've seen all these different things happen, why? I've got favor! Amen. I've had things imputed into me, there are things imputed into you! And you will fulfill your destiny. And you will see great things. But you've got to acknowledge those things that God has put in you. And then you begin to work them. And you work them by faith. Hallelujah. Faith believing that He put them in you. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Go with me to Psalm chapter 5. Psalms chapter 5. Let's go back here. And go down here to... Uh, Psalm chapter 5, verse 11. But let all those that put their trust, how many know that trust, trust is faith. Trust is believing. Amen. Amen. Some people have squirrely ideas about faith churches. Well, you, you guys are too much into faith. Oh, well, should I join your church that doesn't believe in believing? Should I not trust God anymore? Because faith is trusting God and believing His Word. So evidently, you have a different concept of what faith is because I think you were saved by it. I think you're healed by it. Amen. I have people call me all the time. I mean, over the years, I, I, I can't even count how many times people have called me who said they didn't believe in that faith stuff, but when they got sick, they called me. When they had a, this or that, you know, whatever. Praise God for it! Because finally the light comes on and they say, you know what, I need someone who can believe. I need someone who can get a hold of God. I need someone who trusts the Lord. It's impossible to please God without faith, the Word of God said. I don't want to be on the other side of that. I don't want to. I just want to please my God. And what is it? Trust. But let all those that put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. 
because you defend them. Let them also that love your name. Oh, there's power. There's authority in the name. Come on. Be joyful in you. Glory to God. Amen. For you, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will bless the righteous with favor. Will you compass him or uh, make a shield uh, or surround them uh, as with a shield? My daughter Amy got in a car accident this past week. And uh, she's flying down, well, speed limit, going down. I want to make that clear. When I say flying down, I don't mean fast. She's going down the uh, service road uh, and, and coming to an, an intersection uh, here in Rockwall, close to Faith there, coming this way. And, and she's going, and it's green light. How many of you know green means go? So she just was continuing on, and a fire truck decides to go through the red light without a siren. She had to swerve, and when she swerved, she ran into the cement pillar in the, in, right where you, you see the, uh, there in those underpasses, and went up the thing. Her car was crushed in on the front fender. Her door was just enough in so that her legs could fit. We went over and saw the car, uh, the van afterwards, and, and glass everywhere smashed the engine on the ground, the wheels like this, completely totaled. And she walked away. Amen. Sitting right back there. Glory to God. Why? There's a shield around you by His grace. There's a shield around There's a, a shield of angels all around you every day. And you've got to acknowledge that. How do we get our faith to work in these areas? We acknowledge these things that God has put in us and put around us. Man, that, that, that airbag went off and all that stuff. I mean, it just... God is so good. God is so good. God will protect you. I was coming home one time in my car and... It was late at night. I was extremely tired. And I'm driving home on the freeway going about 70 miles an hour or so. And uh, I, I, I just kind of started to, my eyes twitching a little going. I opened my eyes and the ground was turning. How many know the ground wasn't turning? I was. And it, boom, landed on, on the, uh, well, boom this way, the driver's side. I had to climb up out of the window of the, passenger side, and it ran to the side of the freeway. And it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. And, and ambulance pulls up. And they said, excuse me, do you, do you know where the body is? I say, I am the body. <laughs> and they sat me down on the back of the ambulance. They're shaking this. And I'm like, Am I not supposed to be okay? <laughs> you know, and 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 uh, they put a thing around my neck, and and uh, they said, "You want to be hauled off somewhere?" I said, "No, I'm going home. I'm tired. <laughs> I went home. Glory to God." What am I saying? For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor and compass him with a shield. I acknowledge that. I know my God's with me. I know my God's with me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my little sweetie is here today, and I praise God. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. Very easily, she could have been gone in that situation. Very easily. I don't know how many times you've slammed into a pillar in the side of a freeway. But that's not a good thing. But those good things in you 
will get you through. Amen. Amen. God's trying to tell us He's with us. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. Everybody say, I'm righteous. righteous. You've got to acknowledge you're righteous. He'll acknowledge, oh my goodness. He will, he will bless the righteous with favor. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. You've got righteousness. You are in righteousness. You are blessed. Glory be to God. You walk in this. Hallelujah. You have favor. Jesus is your advocate with the Father. In other words, He made a way, the mediator between you and the Father, making a way for you to be in right standing with the Father is Jesus, so you have right standing. Another word for that is righteousness. You walk in righteousness. Acknowledge, I have righteousness. Say, I have righteousness. Say, I'm righteous. Well, Pastor Jeff, I'm not righteous. I, I do wrong things. I, I mess it up all the time. I, are you telling me that you're not in right standing now because of the blood of Jesus Christ? See, there's a difference between holiness and righteousness. Holiness is what you do. Righteousness is who you are. Did you hear what I said? Holiness is what you do. Righteousness is what you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are righteous. You've got, you are righteous. Righteousness is in you. Come on. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You've been placed by the mediator, the, the one Jesus, who made a way to get you back reconciled. Say, I'm reconciled. To the Father. You are now have legal right to go boldly before the throne room of grace. Why? Because Jesus made the way and you are in right standing now with the Father. Amen. Nothing can stop that. Glory to God. You're in righteousness. Hallelujah. Now holiness is what you do. But you know what holiness is? Getting in the Word and producing the Word. And the Word works. Holiness is not by the flesh. I think I'll be holy today. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me how that works for you. I, I, you know, most religions try to do everything by the flesh. Everything they teach you is by the flesh. You got you to gotta do it. Now, now, don't get me wrong. You have a will. You've got to first start the will going. Amen. But you do it by getting in His Word because the Word is seed. And the seed produces harvest. And if you get in the Word long enough, the Word will produce the works. Amen. 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 I'm not good because I, you know, <clears throat> I'm not good because I'm trying to get to heaven. I'm not good because of this, that, and the other. I'm good because I have a new nature and I'm beginning to find and acknowledge what that is. Hallelujah. You keep acknowledging the good things, you'll do good things. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Turn with me to Romans chapter 5. So we've been given this grace, this favor, this righteousness. Glory to God. Romans chapter 5. And go down here to uh, verse 17. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, that was Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of, <laughs> of grace, everybody say grace, Amen. favor, gift, and of the gift of righteousness. How many know righteousness is a gift? It says it right there. You know what a gift is? Something you didn't, you, you didn't have. It was something given. It was something you didn't earn. It was something given. It's something you receive by faith. For if by one man's offense death reigned, that was by Adam, and we all had that sin nature in us through Adam. <sighs> much more. Everybody say much more. I like that. They which receive abundance, abundance of grace 
and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're now reigning in life. You're of the royal family. You are kings and priests. Hallelujah. You're of a priestly, <laughs> a royal priesthood. You all, <laughs> you got to find out what you are now. And what belongs to you. Because we were, we're no longer under the curse of Adam. We're no longer under the fall. If you're born again, you have entered into eternity. Eternity doesn't start when you die. Eternity starts when you were born again. You don't start living for Jesus when you die. You live for Jesus today. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of right standing, the reign in life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory to God. Glory to God. That's the great exchange. That's, they, <laughs> Jesus took on your sin. Past, present, and future. Do we still ask for forgiveness? Yes. But that's for you. As far as Jesus is concerned, it's already a finished work. No, it's so that you can get back into acknowledging that you are born again and you're no longer of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let sin separate you from this reconciliation. Don't let sin stop what God's already done. So you say, Lord, forgive me of that. He's just to forgive you of all your sins. Amen. Because it's already done. It's already finished. It's a finished work. How many know the blood of Jesus doesn't have to be spilled again? Amen. It's already done. I said it's already done. Amen. It's already done. Matter of fact, the Word of God says, stop having a sin consciousness. Amen. Amen. Why? Because He wants you now to realize you're not of that anymore. Start reading the book and find out who you are now. Start out finding out how to walk in this new nature. Find out what God says. Put those seeds inside you. This is not difficult. The more you get of Him, the more you don't want to be a part of this world anymore. I want more of Him. The more of Him, the more you will see His image in you. Hallelujah. And you'll reign in life. You'll walk in blessing and you will... <laughs> whoo, you'll decree a thing and it shall be done for you. Why? Because you're reigning in life now. You're, you're speaking the Word. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. Well, how do you know that, the Word? <laughs> Amen. By His stripes I was healed. Amen. Past tense. I got it. Glory to God. Walking in it. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm whole. I'm not trying to get healed. I'm whole. I walk whole. I, I, I'm not in fear of the next virus. My goodness, that, that virus is afraid of me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I mean, you look at some of these guys, uh, 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 John G. Lake and, and different ones over in Africa. My goodness, the, the, malaria and all these different things going on. Power of God was in him. Amen. Matter of fact, he, he put something in his hand and it just, just went away. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I recently uh, prayed for somebody. Uh, they thought it was a mix of malaria and something over there. My goodness. We got power over that. Amen. 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 And praise God, they came uh, completely victorious in that situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we acknowledge every good thing from the good book. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Gospel means good news. Come on, notify your face. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We've got to get this so deep down inside of us. So I'm righteous. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Not far from Romans 5. Romans 10, verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, don't be ignorant that you're in right standing now. 
For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness by good works, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Well, I, I, I believe that, Pastor, but I still believe I've got to do good things. Okay, that's true. Well, kind of true. Uh, you do good things now because you have a new nature. Are you trying to do good things because you're self-righteous? Are you doing these things because you're trying to gain your own righteousness? Then why did Jesus go to the cross? No, I've got to acknowledge His righteousness. Amen. That He paid the price. That He did it all. And now I'm good because I take His word on it and I work His word not for me to say what I'm doing. Look at me and my righteousness. No, I do these things now to give Him glory. How do you glorify God? By doing His Word. I'm not trying to do His Word to get to heaven. I'm not trying to do His Word to impress Him. I'm doing His Word to give Him glory. Hallelujah. He's the one that put righteousness in me. He's the one that put favor in me. Anything that I do, He put it in me. How can I go about saying anything of my own righteousness? How can I say that I've done anything good? No, He put it in me. Don't go around saying, look at me or what I've done and oh, you know, and, and that, or preach it that way. No, he did it all. He paid the price. He did it. And it is by his grace I walk. It is by his grace that I am. Hallelujah. And I walk in this grace. And I walk in his love. And I walk in his word. And his word comes alive. And then people see him, not me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Ooh, glory be to God. We've got to get this, people. We've got to get this. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. That believes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Look it down in verse 8. But what saith it? The word is near you even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. Everybody say word of faith. You know why we call our church a word of faith church? Because of this verse. Amen. Which we preach. Paul said that that's what we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be sozo. In other words, it's all about Jesus. You're confessing Jesus. You ever notice how people always confess their sins? And the word God says, confess Jesus. Why? Because as far as God's concerned, your sins are in the deepest sea to be remembered no more. As long as... If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Sozo, healed, delivered. All of this comes the same way. Come on. Hallelujah. For with the heart man believes to righteousness, right standing, your sins are covered by the blood. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. Now, don't, don't quote me wrong. I didn't, never said you don't ask for forgiveness of sins. Yes, you ask for the forgiveness of your sins. But it's in the acknowledgement of what Jesus did. You are confessing the Lord Jesus. You're confessing the cross. You're confessing the blood. Hallelujah. Sin has no power. If you're confessing sin then all you're getting is sin. Though you're confessing the Lord Jesus who conquered sin. Amen. 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 So our heart is, is to be repentive of sin, but our confession is more than that. Our confession, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Say it's all about Jesus. Say it's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Then you can confess... 
When you know you're in right standing, then you can confess everything boldly. When you acknowledge every good thing inside you, you begin to get bold. Hallelujah. You begin to speak the word. Hallelujah. You come boldly before the throne room of grace. Hallelujah. I'm going to end this morning in Ephesians chapter 1. Anybody get anything out of this this morning? Ephesians chapter 1. We're, we're so blessed. Say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. He did it all. I said he did it all. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. And let's go down here to verse 2. I like this. Grace be to you. Or you could say it this way. Favor be to you. Or you could say this. Empowerments be unto you. And peace. Grace and peace. You know, so many times, uh, uh, different letters, we call them epistles. Those were the wives of the apostles. No, 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 I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> epistle means letters. Uh, we, we look at that and say, oh, well, the, the first couple verses are just salutations. You, you get these theologians. You know, I'm a theologian. I study the Word, but they want to use the, use the title. We're a theologian. When he said, grace be to you and peace from our God and Father, that was just a salutation. He didn't really mean you get that. Well, I happen to have a PhD, and I say it means that. Now, it says here, grace be to you and peace from God our Father. Now, what does it mean, peace from God our Father? That's the reconciliation. You're at peace with the Father now. You have this gift. You have this favor and you are now in right standing with the Father from the Lord Jesus Christ who paid the price for it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3, I like this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has, everybody say has, how many, how many know has is past tense? It's past tense. Who has or hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. Now we're seated in heavenly places. When? Now. Say now. Do you notice that the word places there is italicized in, in your Bibles? Do you know that, that when it says you're seated in heavenly places, it, the word places also there is italicized? We have this idea that we're seated somewhere out in the North 40 looking at the throne. So anybody got some binoculars out there, got a lounge chair, looking so far, and yet... We're the body of Christ. Everybody say body. body. We're the body of Christ positioned in Jesus. Amen. Amen. On the throne. When you speak the word, you're speaking with the full authority of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, those are spiritual blessings, Pastor Jeff. Those are spiritual blessings. Everything in the natural comes from a spiritual God. Amen. Yeah, there, righteousness is a spiritual thing. Favor is really a spiritual thing. There's all kinds of spiritual things. But every good gift comes down from the Father of lights. So everything starts in the spiritual realm before it comes into your natural realm. How many know you have a natural body, yet it has spiritual righteousness? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, ha who has already done it. He's already put these things in you. Now we need to acknowledge every good thing that God has put in us in Christ Jesus. Say, I have good things inside me. I acknowledge 
every good thing. Woo! I acknowledge. I have favor. I acknowledge. I have righteousness. I acknowledge. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. Woo, hallelujah. If you could go ahead and, and uh, 